Jeremiah 17, 9. We're going to spend a little time just looking at one passage in Jeremiah. I'm not going to seek to exegete the entire book tonight. I don't have time to do that. But tonight we're going to be talking about the subject of the conscience. If you're taking notes, you may want to just write the title. The title of tonight's message is Let Your Conscience Be Your Guide and then follow it up with a question mark. Followed up with a question mark. So we're in Jeremiah chapter 17. We're going to look at verse 9. I'm going to ask you to stand for the reading of God's Word. As we give it its due honor and reverence, as we read this one short verse in the book. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Father God, it is your will that I seek to accomplish tonight in the preaching of your word. We know that every word of your Bible is true, that you have kept it and preserved it for us, and that tonight our job is not to impose upon the text our meaning, but to take from it your meaning. And I seek as we go through various texts tonight looking at the subject of conscience that you would, in your mercy, grant us the ability to be kept from error and be kept in the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't remember which Disney film it was. Some of you may be able to help me out. But there was a Disney film where there was a little song, and in the song was the words, Always let your conscience be your guide. What movie was this? Was it Pinocchio? I was going to say Pinocchio. I didn't want to be wrong. So Pinocchio tells us, Always let your conscience be your guide. And Jiminy Cricket said it. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm getting schooled now on Disney folklore. I appreciate that. That's exactly where I want to be tonight. It's, uh, it's okay. It's okay. We're, we're, we're going to continue on to the lesson. And that's what we hear. Always let your conscience be your guide. And I got to thinking one day when I was studying the Word, and I was looking up ideas about men and what our problem is, and the main problem that we have is sin. The main problem in the world, the, the, the problem that ends and begins all problems is sin. Sin is in the world. Sin corrupts the world. Sin is the reason for everything. Even death is the result of sin. The Bible says that it wasn't until sin entered the world that death entered the world. But when sin entered the world, death entered the world because of sin. Romans chapter 5 says those very words. So we know that there is something wrong with man. There is something wrong with us, and it is sin. So the question becomes then, is it right to say, always let your conscience be your guide? Well, tonight we're going to talk about that a little bit. Because the Bible actually describes this in two ways. The first thing the Bible teaches us, very simply, is that our conscience, our heart, our mind, our desires, however you want to express that impulse within you that makes you do what you do, the Bible says that that part within us has been corrupted. I ask you to look back at the verse we just read. It says the heart is is deceitful above everything. It is deceitful above all things. It is, it is sick. Other translations say it is desperately wicked. That the heart itself is corrupt. Who can understand it? Who can really understand the depravity of their own heart? Because we always think we do right. It's always in our heart that we're doing the right thing, you know. Most people, when they do things, no matter how bad it is, think that what they're doing is right. 
They justify themselves. And they forget that their heart sometimes will lie to them. I, I want to just ask you really quick to turn to Proverbs. We won't be going back to Jeremiah very soon, so you can, you can just go ahead and turn with me to Proverbs 28. And I'll turn with you, and you turn with me, and we'll all turn together, and hopefully in there about the same time. Proverbs 28, verse 26. Speaking about the heart of man. Proverbs 28, verse 26. Says, if you're there, say amen. amen. Proverbs 28, 26. Whoever trusts in his own mind, and I like the older rendering better. It says whoever trusts in his own heart, but either way is a proper translation of what is being said. Whoever trusts the impulses, what's being said. It's the impulse of the mind, the impulse of the heart. Whoever puts his trust in that is a fool. But whoever walks wisely will be delivered. It says in the ESV, uh, verse 26, but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. So he who trusts in his heart, he who trusts in his own mind, he who trusts that everything he thinks is right is fool. I want to ask you now to turn to Genesis 8. Genesis 8 and verse It says in verse 21, and, the Lord, and when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. That he has an impulse for sin that comes even from his youth. That by his nature, he is a child of wrath, Ephesians 2, verse 3 tells us. There is something wrong with our heart. <coughs> There's something wrong with our minds. There's something wrong with us. It's called sin. And if we want to say, well, you're saying in the Old Testament, let's see what Jesus has to say. I invite you to turn to Mark chapter 7. Not that the New Testament is any more inspired than the Old Testament. Both come from the same Holy Spirit. But the New Testament has the words of Jesus Christ. And we see in verse chapter 7, Mark chapter 7, verse 21, these words. Jesus is speaking. He says, for from within, out of the heart of man, comes evil things. Evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and they defile the person. The defilement is not from the world in, the defilement is from the heart out. It begins within us. I had a conversation from a or a conversation with an atheist a while back. And I know you all, I know all you guys wonder, who does he run around with? Because I always have these conversations like, where do you hang out? <laughs> Trust me, I got a family that's huge, and there are so many people just in my family that there's enough to, uh, to, to, to have many wonderful conversations with. That, that, that in, anyhow, had a conversation with, a, with an atheist uh, and, and, and was talking to them, uh, this person, about, about the fact that, that man's heart is, is, is evil. We have this, this impulse, this desire, and that we know what is right and wrong and we choose to do wrong. And I said, we know what's right and wrong from birth. I said, we have this, the, the, the children know it's wrong to lie. They know it's wrong to steal because when they do it, there's an overall whelming sense of guilt that falls upon them. When they do something wrong, they don't have to be told it's wrong. They just know. 
that it's wrong because they do it and then they feel the sense of guilt. And she says, no, 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 no. They learn it's wrong. It's something that we're learned. It, you, 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 society tells you something's right. Society tells you something's wrong. And I said, no, if you look into even the darkest regions of our world where the word of God has not reached, you will still find people who live by a set of standard laws. And the laws usually go something like this. You don't kill. You don't steal. You don't lie. It sounds a lot like a little document that I like to call the Ten Commandments. Right? And those Ten Commandments